Well, hello there, friends. Another fantastic show for you today. Seafood chowder. This is an amazing seafood chowder. Look at it. Look at it. Look how beautiful that is, folks. I'm going to show you how to make it. Stay tuned. All right, friends, today, a beautiful recipe, one of my favorite soup. I'm going to show you how to make a seafood chowder. And uh, it's got, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> Look at all this. It's got all kind of goodies in there, my friends. It's got uh, uh, a beautiful red snapper. It's got some grouper. It's got some baby shrimp. It's got some scallops. And then we got all kind of vegetables in there. So let me just start right away because uh, we got to get going, friends. This is uh, onion, uh, a diced onion right there. Uh, I got all my ingredients. Remember, I don't start cooking, and, and you should not start cooking either until all your mise en place is down. Everything chopped and diced. And you're going to say, well, you didn't chop this. <laughs> you're right. I didn't chop because I want to show you how to do it. All right? And, and I didn't chop my basil because I want to show you how to make chiffonade with this. Uh, but I did chop the fennel. I just wanted to show you. Some of you that may not use fennel. Let me just turn the heat on. You know what? It works better if you turn the heat on. I had turned it off for a second. Now I got to turn it back on. So uh, this is fennel. If you don't have fennel, don't worry about it. Matter of fact, you know, if you don't have grouper or if you don't have snapper, buy whatever fish you can get at the fish market. You know, just buy yourself whatever you can find. You know, so, you know, you can substitute. Oh, well, I don't have this. I don't have this. Don't worry about it. Put what you have. That's the beauty about cooking, okay? So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to saute the onion, and we're going to get it. Remember, onion is always number one. Don't forget that, okay? That's all there is to it. I'm going to repeat it every time I make a video, and every time there's onion, I'm going to tell you onion is number one, okay? So you don't forget. And then we're going to add another kind of onion today. We're going to add shallots. You don't have shallots? Don't worry. Just put the onion. That's all. That you have to have. Okay? But the rest of it, you don't need to have it. Fennel? You don't have fennel? That's okay. Add celery. You know? And because you may not even like the anise flavor. It's not very much anise flavor. It's a little bit. I don't use those frown right there. Just cut them off. And I just dice it like this. That's all. Uh, you can save it for decoration. <laughs> In fact, I'll put a nice uh, uh, a sprig of a decoration on the top of it, right? So we saute the onion a little bit. Now, I'm not looking to caramelize them, just to sweat them until they're translucent. I don't want them to be golden brown. I'm not interested in that. I just want to make sure I saute them a little bit so they're translucent and they release some of their sugar. That's all I'm really interested in doing with this, right? So then we're going to put the shallots. I got a lot of shallots in there. But you don't have to have shallots. If you don't have them, don't worry. Relax, it's only cooking, folks. We're not sending a man on the moon, eh? Some people are like so ain't all about it. Oh, mamma mia, I don't have this. I'm not going to be able to make that recipe. Don't worry, relax. I have another glass of wine. It's only cooking. All right? So we, <laughs> we got to dice, 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 and then we're going to put the potatoes. Okay, so we can go. Let's go. Let's put the peppers in there. You're going to love this soup, let me tell you. I'm going to teach you how to make a, the perfect texture. To me, a, a soup, look at that, nicely diced. You see how everything is pretty? How everything is nice and pretty and diced? Yes, there's a lot of, you know, I was going to make a video on how to dice uh, and chop vegetables. There's a lot of very good one out there, folks. A lot of good video. I don't need to do a video to explain you good one out there. Uh, I mean, if you really want me to do it, you'll ask me and I'll do it. But there's so many good videos out there of people that do the good chopping and dicing, really, really good. You, you don't need me to do it. But if you want, you'll insist, <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'm loving it. I love you doing it on YouTube. It's so different. You know, years ago, I used to have a show on PBS. By the way, I'm not just talking here. I'm waiting for the vegetables to get a bit of a head start. Years ago, I used to have a show on PBS called Sunshine Cuisine. Some of you may remember it. In New York, it was right after Julia Child. Matter of fact, we were nominated uh, by the James Beer Foundation for our show. Our show was really, really wonderful. But you would put out a show, and then you had to wait like six months before you got uh, feedback, because it takes forever on television. With YouTube, I put on a show. Within an hour, I get a few thousand comments. It's just amazing. It's just fabulous. It's really very rewarding, friends. All right. Oh, we got potatoes in here. Remember, you got to take your potatoes, friends. You got to keep them in water. What about this one? <laughs> Uh, I, I won't show you how to dice it correctly. Look, look, look. See? Perfect. All of them perfect dice. All right? So, then water. I don't use water. You notice I don't cook with water. Eh? So, here you go. Take the water out of there, okay? 
Who wants to cook with water? Whenever you see somebody cooking with water, change channel. I go to the Playboy channel myself <laughs> when I see that. You go wherever you want to go. Look, look, look. We're getting good. We're, lo we're looking good. We're looking good here, friends. We get the head start of the potatoes a little bit. We get the potato, a little bit of head start. Garlic, you put however you want. This is the garlic puree I make on, um, on, on YouTube. You see it. There's a video of me making a garlic puree. It's just uh, garlic and olive oil. It's no big deal. It's just garlic and olive oil pureed together into this uh, puree that I keep in, in my freezer. You can keep it for 17 years in a freezer. <laughs> I don't know, 70 years, but quite a while. You can keep it in the fridge for, for not many days, though. Woo! Be careful, it's hot. <laughs> here we have, we'll put a little bit here so I don't burn the bottom of the pot. This is the chicken stock, eh? Vegetable stock you can use. Use a vegetable stock if you're going to make a, uh, you can use a seafood stock. Who's got a seafood stock? Only restaurants have seafood stock. I mean, uh, unless you guys are like really serious cook, then you have a seafood stock. Otherwise, most people don't have a seafood stock, right? So you use the chicken stock. You don't want to make your own chicken stock? Oh, uh, we shot a video on, uh, on, uh, on, a, on a chicken stock. I don't know if it's released yet, but we have a, We just made one, a beautiful one. So the, the potatoes. Let me cut it before it's too, while, it's, while I'm waiting. I got to wait, so I might as well show you something. And um, if you want to do a nice dice, okay, Number one, it's very dangerous to cut something that moves. It's very dangerous to cut something that is wet because it's slippery. And it's slippery enough as it is, a potato. We don't need it to be more slippery than it needs to be. Let me move this out of the way, right? So we have it right there. Okay, so now, first thing we want to do is we want to make it sure the potato don't move. <laughs> then the potato don't move. What kind of English is that? I think instead of my English getting better, it's getting worse. So... <laughs> We gotta make sure the potato don't move, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut a piece out. Look, now it doesn't move anymore, see? Cut a piece out, right? So now I'm gonna make a box. I'm gonna make a box, so I'm gonna make a square box. It's really simple, my friends, okay? Square, all right, fairly square. If you haven't drink too much, it's square. All right, so now what do you do? Go, you're gonna make a dice. The size of the dice, I don't want to be confusing anybody, but I got to make sure this is going, okay? Let me put a little more stock in there. And I should remove the ladle out of there so I don't burn myself every, <laughs> every time. You would think after 50 years in the kitchen, I learned something, right? No, not me. I still burn myself, especially when I eat the food. I burn myself. I cut. No, I don't cut myself. <laughs> you watch. I say that, and sure enough, today's going to be the day. I got to tell you, in 50 years... If I had to count how many times I cut myself, I probably can do it with this two hand. I'm very careful with the knife. So, anyway, what are we doing now? We're going to cut these potatoes. First of all, you got to keep them in water, otherwise they oxidize, they turn black. The size of the dice is determined by the size of your slice. The size of your dice is determined by the size of your slice. Meaning, if I cut this potato in two, I'm going to have huge dice. More slices I do, smaller the dice is going to be. You're going to see why in a minute, okay? So first, let's cut slices. One, two, three. Now, here is where I tell my student. You got three slices. Here, okay, you can probably get another two here, but it's kind of difficult, right? So here's what you do. You take it this way, and you're going to make some other slices. They're going to be smaller slices. How many, what sizes you make them? All the same. You see the way they are? Look. They're all about the same, right? Okay, so we're going to continue the slice the same size. See? Same size. All the same. Okay, so now we're going to put this aside. You'll understand in a minute what I'm doing here, okay? So now look, I got, remember what I told you at the beginning? The size of my dice, I predetermined by the size of my slice. So now look, what we're going to do now, we're going to make julienne. What size do we make them? We make them a square, right? So here we go. We got a square. See? One, two, three. One, two, three. When you get good, you can put them on top of each other. But in the meantime, you have now what is called a julienne. And a julienne is a perfect square. So now all we got to do, what about this guy right there? Well, we take him. You can do two at a time. You just got to hold them, right? One, two. One, two. 
one, two, one. Over there. Look, you got perfect julienne. So now what do we do with our julienne? We take our julienne, we put them in a pack, and now we're going to dice them. Remember, everything is the same size, so now we got a perfect dice. You see? A child could do this. You got a perfect dice. Now, and you say, well, why does it matter? Why does it matter? Mamma mia. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you why it matters, my friend. It matters because size matters. I know, I know, you're going to think like, oh, he's kidding. No, I'm not. Size matter. If the thing, if the food is the same size, they'll cook at the same speed. And if they cook at the same speed, then they're going to taste better. I promise you. It's a subliminal thing. If you cut the potato all different sizes, some are going to be mushy and some are going to be crunchy. Is that what you want? I don't think so. You want it to be cooked the same. That's why size is so important in cooking. Okay, look. See, a child could do this. When you know how to do it, you go, oh, I can do this, all right? So now what do we do? Well, one thing is for sure, we take it and voila. Now you know what's gonna happen. Those potato over there, and this right there, you give it to the duck, okay? Here you go, duck. All right, let's clean up. <laughs> all right, this is a quick little thing, but it's important, my friend, that I tell you, okay? Sometimes it's little things that make a difference. You know what I haven't done yet? I haven't put any salt and pepper in my soup. I haven't put a salt. Now for pepper, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put a little crushy, uh, crush red bell peppers, red peppers, red peppers. A little bit of a, a spice from red peppers, just like this. Put as much or as little as you want, and then we're gonna put uh, Mediterranean sea salt. There you go. Measure carefully, yeah? <laughs> Mamma mia. All right, oh, I wanted to show you this fish. Look how beautiful that fish is. Look at it. Look how gorgeous that is. Look at this. You know, you know you have fresh fish, right? When you look at the bloodline and it's red. You go to a fishmonger, and if you see the bloodline that is uh, uh, brown or gray, go to the next fish market, okay? Usually grocery stores don't do a very good job with fish. I don't know what it is, but just, just don't. So it's best to get that a fishmonger. We're lucky in Fort Lauderdale, we got a fishmonger called a fish peddler. It's in Fort Lauderdale. It's an amazing fish. Uh, I've been buying from them for 20 years. I'm so lucky. You're very, very lucky. I, I have everything. Now, the bloodline, I don't really care for it. So, you know, sometimes what I do is to just remove it a little bit of it. This is not really a bad bloodline, so we don't worry too much about it, okay? It's not really bad at all. It's not bad. All right, we leave it alone. All right, so now we've got to cut this in little squares. So what do we do? We cut it for in slices. Remember, it's all about a slice. Everything starts with a slice. I don't care if I'm cutting fish or if I'm cutting potatoes. Okay? Everything has to start with a slice. And then what do we do there? Well, this is going to be a perfect size dice right there. You see? But what about here? Cut it in half. We got a julienne. I don't care if it's a potato or a carrots. If you're going to be a dice, and, and why is it important in a soup? to have it all nice, small, because it's got to fit. Look at that. Boy, we're really cooking. We're really cooking here, folks. This is not, uh, this is good. See, the, the whole time I'm doing this, you know, when I started doing this, everybody was telling me, oh, you know, you never, people are never going to look at your video because they're long. I said, well, if they want to cook with me, they can do it. Look, I'm doing it. I'm cooking. This is not like I'm pretending. I'm cooking, because, you know, it is going to be dinner for me tonight. <laughs> You want to come over anytime, I'll give you some, all right? But this is, this is not like a, a pretend cooking show, okay? Where we pre no, we do it, and we eat it, and, and you invite it. You come to my school in Fort Lauderdale, but you better hurry up, though, because I'm retiring at the end of the year from cooking at the school because I'm going to concentrate solely on YouTube. I'm having fun with YouTube, so it's going to be my... Uh, third career. My first career was a restaurateur, and uh, I, I did that for 30 years. I ran one of the best restaurants in America. I was very lucky. I did that for 22 years, my friends, 22 years. And then I retired. I retired, sold my restaurant uh, 25 years ago, and I was bored to death, so I opened up a cooking school. 
And, uh, and we, I've been doing this for 20 years, and I've had so much fun. Let me tell you, the first 20, 30 years of my career, I learned how to cook. And, uh, and the last 20 years of my career, I learned how to teach. And it's been a, a ball. I've had so much fun. I'm telling you, I've always been very, very lucky. Let me take this for the duck right there. <laughs> the duck. We got a lot of ducks here in Fort Lauderdale. Clean up everything here. Make sure your cutting board is always clean. Clean your knife. Everything clean, friends. All right. Oh, one more thing. Let me see. In the meantime, I'm like waiting when I'm going to put my fish. And I'm going to put more stock in there. See the potato and the star. Let me see how the potatoes are doing. The fennel is really going to take a little bit longer than all of it. Potatoes are almost down, so this is good. Let's cut the, um, you know what, since the potato are almost down, let me put, I got scallops in there. Cut it. Everything is cut in bite size, eh? Because it's a soup. It's got to feed on your spoon. So you don't want a big chunk of scallops or a big chunk of fish. You want it to be small enough to feed on your spoon. So remember that, right? So here we go. Let's put the scallop in there, friends. And then we're going to put more stock. All right. You know, that grouper right there could go in right now. And uh, that's the grouper, actually. The other one was the, was the snapper. And, uh, what's going to happen here, friends? And let's put the shrimp. Let's put everything in it. We're good. What's going to happen is all that seafood, friends, is going to stop the cooking process. It's just going to stop it completely. So now we're going to put the, um, we're going to put more stock in there. And you got, you see, I got my stock boiling. I had my stock boiling so we don't waste that much time. But you could certainly put cold stock in there and it would be perfectly fine. And I'm looking at my volume and all the seafood I got. I got a lot of seafood in there, friends. So I can put more stock, you see? I'm going to put more stock here. I want to make a lot of soup. Plus, I'm going to put some cream in there. And then I'm going to thicken it. And, uh, and the best way to do this, I mean, my, my favorite way to thicken a, a, a chowder is to do it with cornstarch. So, or arrowroot or tapioca powder. Or one of those thickeners works just great. Use whatever, whatever thickener makes you happy. But let me tell you, we're going to talk about texture in a minute because it's so important. Oh, it's everything. It's a conductor of flavor. Eh? So, like I said, this soup is going to stop for a second because all that seafood is cold. I got tomatoes in there, friends. I got tomatoes that have been peeled and seeded and, and diced. This is because we have a professional school. We got to do things the right way. But at home, just chop, chop some tomatoes. Don't worry about it, okay? Chop tomatoes, and you'll be perfectly fine. Get some nice cherry tomatoes or plum tomatoes. If you have a minute... Plunge them in boiling water and then a nice water to remove the skin. It's better if you can do it. If you can't do it, don't worry about it, all right? This is, this is what we call a tomato concasse. I, I put them in there. You know what's going to happen, right? The, the tomatoes, all that stuff is now cooling. All of a sudden, the, the soup completely stopped cooking because of all that, 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 that seafood. Then it's ice cold, 38 degrees. It's cooling the whole thing up, okay? Now... I want to tell you something. I want to show you something real quick because it's kind of interesting. We can talk about that later when I thicken it. But you see the way everything is floating right there and you go, wow, that's pretty, right? Okay, see the way everything is floating and now let it go. Look what happened. Everything falls in the bottom, right? Okay, this is a perfect demonstration that texture is everything. I have to make it where everything kind of floats in it. Not everything falls down at the bottom. The reason why it does now is because there's no texture. So everything falls in the bottom. But we're going to build the texture up, and we're going to thicken it, so everything is going to be in there. So when you serve it, everything is together. All of the ingredients are floating, if you will. You'll see. You'll see. We're going to do it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to bring it back to boil, and let it cook for a minute. Then I'm going to put some cream. And, uh, and then we're going to put the, we're going to put now, well, actually, I'm going to put some basil in there. I'm going to cut a chiffonade, and then I'm going to cut the chiffonade down uh, I'm going to cut the chiffonade down to little, little strips, okay? Little strips. I have some potato starch or fish starch, so I don't know what I got on my hand. So, so look, I'm going to cut this up. All right, this, this is, uh, you find the biggest leaf and you put it in the bottom. Find the biggest leaf, put it in the bottom, right? So you keep that, that biggest leaf right there. 
right? And you put it like this, and you put it like this. It, it was this basil was very pretty when I bought it, which was yesterday. It was very pretty, and look at today, la like, mamma mia, you could almost smoke it today. So look, you take it like this, right? And you roll it. Don't be smoking your basil, eh? Take it like that, light it up, and. <laughs> Don't say anything. Look, 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 like this, right? Nice and tight, and you take your knife, and you're going to use your knife. You're going to use a ro rocking motion. See, look, rocking motion. See, rocking motion. Rocking, rocking motion. You basically almost not move. You almost do not move your, your hand, your fingers. You, you go so slowly, 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 you move your finger out of the way. You see, look, a child could do this for the duck. And this right there, folks. So now, I could put this in a soup like this, but you know what would happen? Then we got long pieces, and they don't fit on the spoon. Remember, whenever you make a soup, you got to think, is this going to fit on my spoon? It's really that simple. Is it going to fit on my spoon? So if it's too long, it's not going to fit on the spoon. So look, boom, boom, that's it. All right? Now, don't take your knife. Don't scrape the board. Don't scrape the board with a knife. Okay? Voila. That's it. You see how simple that was? All right. We're done, my friends. Now we're going to wait for this to boil. All right? Oh, it's close. It's close, my friends. It's close. It's really, really close. We're almost there. All right, let's put some cream in there. Measure carefully, okay? This is a big pot of soup. You're going to say, wow, that's a lot of cream. Yeah, but that's a big pot of soup. And then, here's what we're going to do, my friends. I don't want to make the video longer than I have to. I'm going to keep that going. I'm going to bring it to boil. I'm going to bring it to boil, and when it boils... I come right back to you, and we're going to thicken it together, okay? I'm going to test it, and we're going to thicken it together, okay? So I'm going to bring this back to boil. It's going to take a while. It's going to take at least five more minutes to come back to a full boil. So I'm going to come back in five minutes. Okay, friends. Well, this came back to boil, and uh, it took a few minutes. So, you know, you just take the time. It depends the size of your pot. And we can see now we're very liquid, and uh, so we want to make sure we, uh, we, we thicken it. And uh, what we're going to do... We're going to put the cornstarch in here. Put a little bit first and, and see what happened. Just put a little bit first and see what happened. Okay? You know it's starting to take in first because you're going to feel it, but you're also going to start to see then your seafood and your peppers and all that are going to start floating and they're going to stay a little bit on the top instead of falling. Remember, the texture is a conductor of flavor. If I give you a soup too thin, if I give you a soup too thick, it's not going to taste right. It's really, really, really important. This is the conductor of flavor, so here we go. A little more here. And then we're going to see in a minute. I can feel it. And then we're going to test it. It needs to be a little thicker. I hope I have enough cornstarch. We're going to see what happens. You want to mix it as you do it. You want to mix it up as you do it. It's still a little thin. You see, look, I want to show you. Take it, take it a little right there. I want to show you. You see? It's a little too liquid still, you see? It's a little too liquid. So I need a little more cornstarch. So I'm going to go do some cornstarch. I'll be right back. Well, it looks like I need a little more cornstarch. So let me just... Here you go. I needed to get just a little bit more cornstarch. Just cornstarch diluted in water. Just a little bit. You see, it's best if you do a little bit at a time, my friends. Okay, don't go out there and putting too much. Look, in worst case scenario, you put too much. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? You put it on more stock. <laughs> right? See? Oh, yeah. Now we're getting there. Look, look. We're getting there. We're getting there, but still a little too liquid. I'm always afraid to put too much, but... It's really no big deal. You, got, you put almost stock in there if it's too thick. You see, look, look. You see what I was telling you? Look, look. It's, 
the potatoes, everything is right there. You see right there. It's not all, all in the bottom. You still want to mix it when you serve it, but you see, it's right there. See, look, 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 look how beautiful it's looking. You see right there, friends? You see how beautiful that looks? Look at this. See, this is gorgeous, right? Okay, so now, now what we're going to do, oh, you can also add, I'm going to add just a little bit of Ricard. If you don't have any of that, or Pernod, if you don't have any of that, you can put a little anisette. You don't have to, but it, that goes well with the fennel. It goes well with the fennel, you see? Look, we're going to put a little bit. You got to be careful with this, eh? Holy mamma mia. This is very strong. It's like ouzo, ouzo. If you have ouzo, you put it in there. You don't have to. If you don't like anise, don't put it in. Don't worry. Okay, this is just, this is just my preference. This is just, look at this. Look at this, friends. You see? You see how beautiful that looks? Look at this. Look at this. Is that a soup or what? Look, see the way everything is not falling in the bottom? That's what you want, friends. You see right there? Look at this. This is gorgeous. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get myself a spoon. Oh, you know what? I haven't even tested yet. Oh, I can't believe it. I haven't even tested yet. So if I don't test it yet, how do I know if it's got enough salt in there? It probably doesn't have enough salt. Let's see. Ah, I know it was hot. Ah, I could use more salt. Where's my salt? Lock the door. Where's my salt? There you go. A little more salt. Measure carefully, okay? Huh. And we're going to say, oh my God, look at all the soda you just put in. Trust me, this is a big pot. Okay. Now, you know, if you're using a stock that already has salt in it, you know you got to watch for the salt, okay? Let me test it again. Let me get myself a new spoon. That's why I got 17 spoons here. Because, see, 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 look, see the right there, look at the potato right there, see? You see what I mean? You see what I'm talking about? They're not falling. Let me blow on it so I don't burn myself. Every time I say that, ah, you need more salt. And then put it in. Oh, mama mia, that's too much. <laughs> yeah, this guy is nuts. I am not. If you were here eating my food, you would go, damn, it's good. Okay, I, I mean, I don't know what you would say, but I promise you, this is enough. This is good. This right there is perfect. All right, so you test it to your liking, okay? Oh, ah, it's, <laughs> it's delicious. Look at it. Look at this, friends. Look at it. Take a ladle. Oh, yeah. Does that look good or does that look good, my friends? You see? This is what we're talking about right here, friends. You know what you could do? Just to make it nice, take a little bit of, uh, of the fennel. It's probably the only time I use the front of the fennel. And then since we used it, Let's find a nice one right there. What do you think? This is a nice one right there. All right? That's the nice one right there. That's what you do. Look, look. You don't need to do very much, my friends. Right there. This is it. This is it. Right there. Bon appetit. Serve it. Now, if you had a little chives in there, you could put a little chives in there. I'm going to go see if I got some. Here you go. Just a few chives here. Right there, friends. Just a few chives. You see? Now, this, this one I don't like. I don't like that one. So here we go. Out of here. Oh, yeah. The chives are going to give it a nice little onion flavor, my friend. You see? Very simple. Seafood chowder. That, my friend, is a beautiful seafood chowder. I hope you, I hope you like the recipe. If you like it, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to ring my bell so you get a notification every Thursday when I put up a new video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.